What's going on guys? Back working on the Hemi Swap Jeep Renegade, where we're putting the body of a Jeep Renegade on top of a Dodge Charger chassis. In the last episode, we got the drivetrain shoved back in here, engine transmission, even started on the exhaust, drive shafts hooked back up, pretty much good to go. With that being said, we're gonna start on the interior. Uh, gonna do some uh, spray on bed liner, just like I did with the engine bay. Color match, F8 green, everything. We'll be getting everything, one solid color, firewall, floor pan, as far back as the floor goes. Uh, back end is still wide open. We'll worry about that later. <laughs> uh, hopefully that helps with sound deadening. Uh, it's a lot of vibration, noise. Sounds you know, like trash can in there right now. Uh, <laughs> that, sh that should help out. Uh, also, once everything's sprayed one color, we're gonna go ahead and modify the air box for the uh, heating and AC. Uh, it's a little too wide to fit in there. Gonna have to cut it. Shouldn't be too bad, but we'll see what it takes. Uh, once that's installed, Go ahead, bolt in the brake pedal assembly. Uh, trying to work on the firewall right now. Uh, so brakes, air box, and may even uh, test fit the steering wheel. See what it's gonna take to actually bolt all that up. Cut everything out of there, so not a whole lot left to bolt up to. So we'll figure that out when we get to it. Also, putting in the steering wheel, gonna have to put in the rack and pinion. With all that, we'll go ahead, start knocking things off the list. Should be good to go. So interior is bedline, same color, F8 green as the engine bay, uh, and it looks amazing. Probably helped out with sound deadening as well, but mostly it's all one color now, and it looks so much better than before. Now that we have the firewall knocked out, uh, we're ready to do the air box. You can see I got, this is where the air comes into the cabin. That was the old Renegade air intake. I'm gonna have to block that off at some point, uh, figure something out about that. Should have welded it up, but yeah oh well uh this is a harness possibly i'm not sure that's where the ac comes in uh heat cool and steering that was the renegade wiring also should have blocked that off i'll just make a patch panel for that no worries but now that the firewall is ready we can go ahead and fit the air box or the hvac that's the air intake into the uh, heating and ac it does have to be modified you can see this is uh cut short a little bit there so I guess we'll go ahead and do a 3D scan of the air box, see how it fits in with the firewall, see what has to be cut, and then uh, we'll go from there. We're over at Shining 3D. This is the 3D scan software for the Einstar 3D scanner. And you can see I'm slowly walking around trying to get as much detail, as many angles, uh, points of perspective and whatnot on this air box. You can see there, uh, that is an arm for a uh, sawhorse. <laughs> Gotta have this thing sitting up somehow. Uh, figure sawhorse would be easiest to delete, you know, edit out later. But you can see moving around top, bottom, front there. Really the main important parts, those bolts on the front, you know, circular pieces there, kind of hard to tell what they are, but that is what mounts to the firewall. And then the uh, square or rectangular opening on the left over there, that is where the air actually comes into the car, you know, into the cabin. Uh, we got AC inlet also right there on the uh, front. And now walking around kind of right by the uh, driver's knee area uh pretty difficult to explain what's going on but you know you guys can see it uh just kind of trying to get as much detail as possible really don't need all of it but i figure since i'm scanning it i might as well <laughs> now that i've got this thing pretty much fully 3d scanned i need to go in and clean it up a little bit you can see here the legs of the sawhorse we definitely don't need that uh it's just in the way 
but really can't do anything about it. It's got to be sitting on something. I guess I probably could have hung it from the uh, from something, but you know it is what it is. Not a whole lot of work just to go in, you know, clean it up, delete whatever floating objects there. Yeah, sometimes this thing just picks up random stuff, and you know it is what it is. But once it's edited, you get to see the final result, and this thing is crazy. Just look at the detail there. I mean, picks up, yeah, bolts, all the mounting. You can read the labels. I mean, even the part number. Uh, this, <laughs> the amount of detail this thing picked up is insane. But for what I'm doing, I really don't need that. So I'm going to go through, simplify it, drop it down to about 50%. This thing currently has like 900,000 triangles in it. So drop it down to about 470 uh, it makes it a lot easier on the next program, you know, dropping it into Fusion 360, uh, it struggles, you know. We're over in Fusion 360, you can see I got the firewall pulled up for the charger already. Well, this is firewall for the charger and then frame rails for the Renegade. This is a scan of what the car is right now. So, we'll go ahead, we'll drop the uh, AC unit in here, you know, airbox, whatever we want to call it. And you can see, really, almost perfect fit, you know, uh, across the top there. Of course, it's going to fit along the bottom here. That's all charger, everything. And if we can swing around to the front, this is where the AC comes in. Uh, that's a wiring harness, I'm pretty sure. And this is the air box, air, lit, air inlet. You can see this corner over here. This is what we're having issues with. Way too wide to fit because the charger is uh, substantially wider than the Renegade. So, uh, you can see, what am I going to do? I guess I'll go ahead and hide the firewall just to get that out of the way and I've already done all the work but uh, I need to split this side off and that's how much I need to cut it uh, cut in about that far uh, I've already modeled <laughs> the patch panel uh, 3d print I uh, got that thing printed in uh, ABS and just gonna JB weld it in place uh, using plastic uh, plastic epoxy so I guess we'll go ahead get this thing trimmed up glued together and uh, see how it fits So after a little trimming, everything fits perfect. Uh, real tight clearance, but eh, it barely clears. It's all good. Yeah, just another thing that I thought was going to be a really huge issue, trying to get this box to fit in here. And it, it worked, no problem. It will be a little difficult to make the dash fit over. I think we're going to have some issues right around uh, the side of the box here. We'll figure it out. None of that's really important. That's just air ducts. So... This could also be trimmed up a bit, but I think that's pretty good. Hell yeah. Now I just got to bolt that thing down. It'll draw it in a little bit, and then I'll be able to route the uh, coolant lines. I went ahead and pulled those back out, but they'll come through that little uh, grommet there. Should be good to go. Now that I know the air box fits here, I'm going to go ahead and add some sound deadening material. The factory insulation panel is no longer available, and you can hear... It's pretty loud. It's all just bare sheet metal. The uh, bed liner didn't do a whole lot to uh, get rid of any sound. It's, it's on there pretty thin.
So sound deadener is installed and pretty good improvement over the factory, uh, bare metal. Still not quite perfect, not as good as I was hoping. Again, I was hoping the uh, bed liner was gonna help more than it did, but this is a big improvement, I guess. Yeah, huge change in tone. That shouldn't resonate as much, should block out a lot of the exhaust noise. But I wanna go ahead and put some uh, sound insulating foam rubber down also. That should block a lot of the road noise, a lot of the exhaust noise. Try to keep noise out, you know, because I know it's going to be crazy loud with the uh, very minimal exhaust coming out. Uh, yeah, right here. <laughs> going to go ahead, spray down some 3M rubber and vinyl adhesive spray. Uh, get a good coverage on here. The foam doesn't really need it on the bottom, but definitely up on the sides. Uh, foam is going to come from the bottom up onto the side of the trans tunnel. Uh, as much as I can uh, based on just the material size that I got so go ahead spray this thing down and see Ooh, that's not good ah oh, come on it's been a while since I used it so it's kind of plugged up uh, yeah we'll just do that it'll be alright Mm. <laughs> oh, I'm just making a mess. All right. Yeah, should have definitely got a new bottle, but or a new can. But uh, that should be plenty. Got good coverage. Uh, got to let this dry. So while this is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and spray the actual rubber pads. I got those sitting outside. So we'll get that sprayed down real quick. So, sound deadening foam panels are installed. Huge improvement. <laughs> Instead of like a tin can, trash can sound, very solid. It's definitely going to help out with the road noise, exhaust, everything. Uh, trying to make this thing a little more comfortable because it's not going to be just a straight up race car. Not perfect, but you know, it's going to work. It's all going to be underneath the carpet anyway. But I may end up that's just a solid flat piece of steel not a whole lot going on there so I might go ahead and add some more deadener in there but I think we're ready to install the HVAC unit that should go right in here and have to start hooking up the AC unit and steering I gotta throw that in there I still have to put the uh, rack and pinion haven't done that yet but I modified the uh, lower subframe so it should bolt right in uh, you can see clear shot good to go should clear the exhaust but I guess uh, go ahead, slap the HVAC in, then we'll get this thing up in the air and uh, bolt everything together. Got the airbox installed, brake pedal assemblies installed, brake pedal works, master cylinder, got a good stroke, no bind, still good gap at the back. I can always adjust it. Got a turnbuckle there and brake position or brake pedal sensor. So brake lights will work. Everything is looking pretty good. I think I'm going to try to fit the steering wheel in here, see what it's going to take to mount uh, some type of bracketry off. The factory uh, bar, uh, dash bar that went across here, had all the mounting for 
provisions you know like you can see this is going to nothing that same situation uh this i'm not sure what was on there if anything but all the bracketry all the supports is all missing gonna have to be rebuilt probably gonna come off of uh, my temporary mounts that i put in for mounting the dash uh i don't see why not just go ahead put a bar across there it's gonna have to mount the steering wheel there uh you know gauges kind of envision what it's gonna look like dash gauges right around here still gotta block that hole still gotta block that hole but we're getting there huge step forward i really wasn't sure if the ac and heating was going to be able to you know fit in here looks like it's gonna well of course this is gonna fit uh this is all factory tunnel <laughs> don't know why i'm looking down there but uh as far as fitting in here the only issue was that side there had to trim that side a little bit air still gonna have plenty of path coming in uh whew, i'm not sure how i'm gonna make this work air coming out of here distributing through the factory vents it's gonna be a lot of scanning 3d printing and whatnot but no big deal i think i'm gonna try to throw the steering wheel in real quick um might get under put the steering rack on we'll see Not even sure where it goes. Is it more? Oh well, I'll figure it out. a little far back. I think, no, I mean, the back of the seat's gonna be about here. I'm pretty much even with the B pillar. Yeah, that ain't bad. Dash, center console. Shoot, I think that's gonna work. Well, I mean, it's going to have to. <laughs> Ew, this thing's filthy. Should have cleaned that up first. But. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's going to work. All right. So, all right. So, steering wheel is going to work. I'm uh, going to go ahead and lift the car up in the air. Bolt in the rack and pinion. And that should be, well, one step closer to getting this thing back on the road. <laughs> or on the road for the first time. Yeah. So I hope that's how it went. We'll see. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. That didn't feel good. So we made a ton of progress in this episode. Got the whole interior resprayed with bed liner, F8 green, of course, got a color match. Put some sound deadener in there, try to help with the vibration, exhaust noise, gonna be crazy. Uh, it is what it is. Also got the air box for the heating and AC mounted up, modified, fit perfect, no worries. I don't know what I was stressing about. You know, I made it happen. <laughs> uh, just kind of lucked out on that one. 
uh, got the rack and pinion installed, kind of. Bolts are too long, got to order new ones. Wrong size anyway, uh, small diameter. Also mocked up the steering wheel, got that kind of fit in place. The looks like I'm missing a piece. I don't know. We can see from the rack. Uh, there's nothing there. I guess there's an adapter. It's been so long since I've taken it apart that, ah, uh, who knows? I probably lost some stuff. Might have to look around. Either way, we'll figure it out. Not that big of a deal. But now that the interior is pretty much knocked out, good step forward from where it was. Just got a delivery of a couple batteries. Uh, can't fit the factory size battery in the back because, you know, uh, charger battery is huge. I think it's like a group 31. So I got a couple batteries, you know, make it work. With that, we're going to be jumping on electrical in the next part. And that is one huge step closer to getting this thing fired up. Uh, we knocked out the fuel, vapor, brakes. Uh, <laughs> I got some brake stuff on the way too. Uh, got to throw the front suspension in there. I got, oh man, I got so much stuff to do. Keep getting distracted. But I'm going to focus on electrical, get that knocked out. Throw the whole harness in there. Uh, if you're not aware, it's taking the whole Dodge Charger harness factory as close as possible. Probably going to have to cut off some ends when it gets up to, you know, the lights and whatnot. But we'll worry about that when we get there. As far as starting and running, AC, all interior, everything, it's all going to be Dodge Charger. Uh, <laughs> as close as I can, you know, uh, it's all in theory. It makes sense in my head, but who knows, you know, it might not work at all. But at this rate, we're going to make it happen. So anyway, I'm just rambling. I'll let you all go. Thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting, and uh, let me know what you think of the build so far, but I'll see you in the next one.